I feel like if I am in a relationship where I'm not able to do the things that I was able to do with my last partner, I'm always going to think about that and it's going to piss me off. And mm. I, I would rather just avoid that resentment that I'll have with that guy that's like very unintentional, but will be there. That's another thing, right? So if you can't trust them, then you will be having to make all the decisions and that will bring you more stress and then you'll be acting out in a relationship because you, you don't want to be the dude in the relationship. You want to be surrendering right you know i think re the most beautiful relationships come when you're not looking for it and when you're healed and when you're happy and if you feel like you at any point are craving attention and that's when you go looking for guys that's when you go looking for just fun and instant gratification even without knowing it but he didn't even want me to have my laptop out he didn't want me to talk about work at home it was just like I would have never put up with this shit from anyone else, but at that time, I just really wanted it to work. And I felt like he was thriving off the fact that I was so submissive and it was so unlike me. Women just feel like we can just like mold men into this like person or this character that they never were even meant to be. You have your own identity and to never I tie that identity and tie your worth to someone else even if they made you feel better than you've ever felt before. Like, you are always able to get to your best self without anyone else. What's up, everybody? My name is Talia, Travel with Talia, and today we're going to be doing a different kind of video. We are going to be discussing the realities of dating as a digital nomad. I think everyone thinks that it is so glamorous to travel the world and be able to meet all these amazing, beautiful people, but there is so much more that goes on behind the scenes, and Aaron is about to walk us through the reality of it all. I love how you say I'm gonna walk you through, and you're we're like you're, you're gonna walk us through. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like the, we're gonna talk about like re relationships and dating, and you know just being on the road for like well, how long have you been traveling now? Um, I've been traveling for the last like seven years. Mm, yeah, so you've had a lot of experiences, and you know you're still relatively young. You know you're still only 24, so. I'm allowed to say your age, right? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. So first of all, what do you think about people who are dating uh, when they're digital nomad? What do you think about that in general? I think that it's a very brave thing to do mm -hmm. when people decide to settle down and be loyal to one person as they're on the road if they're not traveling with their significant other because it takes a lot of trust to mm. be traveling the world while your partner may still be at home working or maybe being a digital nomad in a different location, right? It takes so much trust. So you have to be really brave. You have to be very secure. And 99% of relationships, that is what they're lacking is that security in the first place. So just imagine lacking security and then also having your man or your woman in all these amazing, beautiful places with beautiful women, beautiful men with insane accents. You're just like freaking <laughs> out. You're losing it at all times. <laughs> well, so. what's your experience been? Like, have you enjoyed your dating life in the last seven years of travel? What's that been? What's what been like for you? So I have. I've met. Uh, I've met beautiful people. Um, I wouldn't really consider it dating dating but i have been in like long-term relationships over these last seven years um where we've traveled together and we've like worked on the road together and other times where it's just been straight long distance where he's lived elsewhere and i've lived in another place um and i really enjoy it because i enjoy like my alone time and i would say i'm very like secure when it comes to relationship like i'm not going to date you if i feel like behind the scenes there might be something going on um, but it has been weird because when I'm not in like a long-term relationship and then there's like the dating, dating of like getting to know each other and all the things, you're kind of like riding that high of, you know, when you first meet someone and you're in this honeymoon stage, right? And then you go from three days of always being on this high to, okay, they're leaving now. So mm. you just have to kind of like ride those highs because you know that person is just going to go or you're going to go, which has been kind of sad. <laughs> but, but yeah, so how does that affect you then? Because it's like, all right, you go into this new place, it's great. And you meet some guy and he's great. You guys have a thing for like three months or four months and then he leaves to another country and you leave to another country. And that just keeps on happening. So doesn't that, 
doesn't that like have a massive effect on like you you settling down or do you want to do that is that what you want to do all the time or right good question so I want to settle down with one partner and I want to travel the world with one partner so I have been very very picky with who I even decide to spend long-term periods of like that dating stage with because if I know in the if I know the reality is they don't want to live in Bali ever or they don't want to um live on the road and they're just here for, for vacation for a couple months or whatever the case may be, then I don't even entertain it. Whereas I see in a lot of like digital nomad relationships, like they'll just entertain it and they'll, they won't overthink it, which is cool or whatever. But, um, I like to always like anticipate what's going to happen five steps ahead and not play myself. I think it all comes down to like being really realistic. And, um, I know from the jump based on like the first couple of dates, like if I can even see myself with this person long term, and if I know I won't, then I won't hype myself up and get excited. And then I'll just ride the wave for what it is, having fun, just like exploring the country or whatever the case may be, getting to know each other. But um, for the most part, it's been really, really hard to find someone who wants to do the same things as you. And um, at the end of the day, because I have a company and I kind of work w with my own schedule, a lot of the people that I've met, like they work online and they still have to like work in d the same time zones and like have a schedule which blows me every time. So I have like a checklist, right? Like, does this is this guy able to work remote? Is this guy able to work from any time zone? Um, is this guy able to take a couple weeks off if he wants to out of the blue because I want to go to Italy for a month and I want him to come with me? Like, I feel like my requirements are so like ridiculous and so that has prevented me from like actually like being in more long-term relationships so right now I think I'm just like not having fun and like being outside or whatever but I'm not trying to put so much pressure on myself at this moment trying to like settle down until I know exactly exactly like what I want yeah and you're only young right like you're still 24 right and this is another thing I want to bring up is um, right now, it's of course like a twenty-four. Like it's 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 different strokes for different folks, right? Because there's some women that are like, that's their sole mission when they're super young is to find a guy and get married like super early, right? Mm -hmm. Like twenty-two years old, twenty-three. Or there's some women that they want to build a career, and then maybe when they're like thirty, in their mid-thirties, they'll you know s settle down, and that's acceptable for them, right? So it depends on what what you want out of life, really. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so basically what you're saying is you're going for the upper echelon of men, which is fine, right? Because most men, to be able to just say, hey, yeah, let's go to Italy for two weeks. Like, most men can't do that, <laughs> right? right? And so this is the struggle maybe you're having is finding, like, this guy that has that freedom mm -hmm. that he can do that, you know? Exactly. But I think after my, my last two years um, of being in and out of Bali, I've met so many people who are able to do that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like living in Mexico City and living in like, um, I lived in Spain and Puerto Rico, like I didn't meet people like that. But after being in a place like Bali where you meet entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and people who are motivated to like a whole different level, you see that that actually is very possible. And so mm -hmm. I'm not going to like backpedal on what I know I want because mm -hmm. If I made a life for myself where I know I can do that, then I just want my partner to match that energy more. Mm. And um, I was in a relationship like that, and so I can't, like, go back from that mm. after experiencing what that is like 110%. Yeah. It's kind of like the first time you go on business class, and then you go on economy after that, you're just like, <laughs> no, you want to go it back to sucks. business class, right? <laughs> like, you want to go back. Exactly. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> you feel like you're always... I feel like if I am in a relationship where I'm not able to do the things that I was able to do with my last partner, I'm always going to think about that, and it's going to piss me off. And mm. I, I would rather just avoid that resentment that I'll have with that guy that's, like, very unintentional but will be there by just being very strict with my um, my checklists i guess mm. <laughs> my requirements so so when you're in a relationship with a guy what is the what's the dynamic like is it your tell because your whole company is based on like organizing retreats and tours and stuff so are you the are you the bossy one or is he the bossy one? like how does that dynamic work yeah that's a really good question so i would say in the real world in real life like i'm very alpha but i'm also very very feminine mm -hmm. i'm like 
every two weeks, nails, wax, hair, facials, like, I'm very feminine that way, and I'm very comfortable in my feminine energy, but when it comes down to, like, business, I get into my masculine for sure, but when it gets down to being in a relationship, I'll only take lead if I absolutely have to, because because I run tours and because I take so much lead in my company, I want to not do any of that when I'm in a relationship and I want to let that person take control and be very submissive and kind of step back. And if I ever feel like I need to take control of like where we're going to eat and where we're um, like how we're taking this trip and like even though I'm a travel planner by trade, I don't want to plan all of our travels, you know what I mean? But if I have to, I will. And if I want to, like, surprise my man with a trip, then I will, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to not make a lot of decisions when I'm dating, for sure. Only yeah. if I can trust them. Right. Because if you can't... That's another thing, right? So if you can't trust them, then you will be having to make all the decisions. And that will bring you more stress. And then you'll be acting out in a relationship because you, you don't want to be the dude in the relationship. You want to be surrendering right exactly i want to surrender completely i remember i was dating this guy where i trusted him with everything and so i would go to him before i went to youtube before i went to google and before i asked the internet the question i would go to him and he would be really annoyed by it but he was uh, the first person that i actually like trusted trusted 100 percent with like absolutely every little thing down to how to install this fan like before i even read the manual i'm going to ask him mm. <laughs> and um he would give me like a lot of answers to choose from and even that would freak me out because i just like to be told like this is how you do it or this is where we're going and this is what's happening and if i get like three of those answers to choose from even that puts me in a position of i can't trust you mm. it makes me feel like mm. I could have gave myself those three answers. <laughs> and I have those three answers, but I want you to tell me which one of those three. Right. You know, so, yeah. Is that like, <laughs> is that like a big complaint that you have about men in general? That they just can't make decisions fast and they're not decisive? Yes, they're not decisive at all whatsoever. And I feel like when they are decisive about something, you still can't trust them to, like, stick with their word. Like, if I say, like, hey... Do you want to meet me here? Which just happened recently. I asked a friend, like, hey, do you want to meet me over here? Like, this is, this is my travel plans. Like, this is what we're going to be doing. This is, like, my budget um, per person. And he was, like, for a month, like, excited to go, see, talking, like, all of the craziness about going. And then when it came down to it, it was a no. Versus I feel like with Damn. women, they wouldn't even have the audacity to – to let you think that they're coming for a whole month and then say no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, women are very, right. like, deposit ready. They're just ready to make moves, mm. you know? And I see that even when I sell my tours, it's 99% of women because they're ready to make plans in advance. A year in advance, they're ready to book. They're ready to pay. They're um, ready to, like, let somebody plan for them. Like, they're excited to, like, let go of control and join a group tour where they don't have to make any decisions. Whereas men... They don't even read the FAQ on the website. They don't even know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's actually a big problem um, because, you know, following through on your word as a man is like super important. Of course, with everyone it's important, but men especially, because again, the whole trust factor, right? It's like, if you don't follow, because I had this before where, you know, for example, I'd be like, yeah, I'll be there in 10 minutes. And then 20 minutes later, I arrived and then she'd be mad at me. I'm like, why are you mad at me? I'm here. You're so mad. It's <laughs> just like, you said you'd be 10 minutes, you're 20 minutes. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, shit, yeah, you're right. Like, that's a trust thing. So like, I can't trust you that you're going to be there, like, when you said you're going to be there. Or, like, if I, like, that now, like, well, the last, I'd say last year and a half, I've really, like, this made a decision that, like, I am my word. So, like, if I, if I give you, if I say we're going to do something, we're going to do it, right? And I notice now in other other people when they when they first meet me and I tell them hey I'm gonna do I'm gonna be here they're like they d they double t double check with me they're like oh are you really gonna be there I'm like yeah I fucking just said it like, yeah. so I'm gonna <laughs> be there <laughs> like I'm not gonna like flake on you and all this stuff and you know I think that's a big problem with men these days is like they just be it's just become normal to like be like that it's like oh yeah I, I said that but yeah no I didn't mean that you know shit like that and it, that affects your relationships exactly like, if any man's watching and yeah. it, it like it's mind 
effing to women to to have to like double back and like reconfirm like hey are we still on like it makes us it puts us in a position of like are we thirsty because we're checking in to see if he's going to show up for a date that he should be equally as excited for or whatever mm. but we cannot trust men to even like remember things like a date or remember the time of a date you know mm. what i mean like um and even though, you know, someone might be 10 minutes late and it's only 10 minutes, like a man has to think behind the scenes of all that it takes for a woman to get ready. And for us, we're rushing to be on time and we're rushing to look our best and smell our best and all the things. And if we know that that man was late, it's like a disservice to us. Like we could have taken more time to get ready. We, mm. could, we didn't have to like speed here or whatever the case may be. Um, so yeah, I think that men just have to also kind of get in their feminine when it comes to those be beginning stages, most importantly. Yeah. And, and it keeps you on edge too, right? Like, cause this is another thing. So I've heard a lot of women, maybe you've heard women complain about this where they're like, fuck it. Like, I, I don't know if he's like, if he's actually serious about me. Cause he's like, he's kind of like wishy-washy with his answers. It's like, are we going to dinner or not? Like, where, where should I meet? Like, where, where are we having dinner? What time? Like, tell me. Like, are you going to pick me up? I don't know. Like, should I text him and, like, ask him? Or should he text me? Like, what, what do you think? And, like, you know, all this stuff. Like, just in the gray zone. Like, the guy is keeping her in the gray zone. Mm -hmm. But she keeps going back to him. Even though he's not sending a clear signal that I want you and I'm certain, like, I'm this kind of guy. She still wants him, even though she doesn't like that part of him. You know, if that get, exactly. does that make sense? So why do you think women do that? Um, I think women just try to give people enough chances and be like, oh, he's probably stressed out today. I had a long day at work, and that's why he just, like, waited until the hour before we were supposed to meet up to find a place and book a reservation. Or, oh, like, we just make excuses and try to, like, always see the best in someone before we see the red flags. Like, the red flags are a little bit yellow and orange at first. <laughs> and we're like, okay, this is a red flag. But even, like, my girl, she got asked out by this one guy she met. And then, like, two hours before the date, he's texting her, like, do you know of any sunset spots? And I'm like, no. Like, you're both new here. What makes him think that you know of any good sunset spots? You guys both came to Bali the same day. And there's Google, and there's Instagram, there's TikTok. There's all these places for you to find a sunset spot. Like, come on now. And... If somebody were to text me that, I wouldn't think of it, I wouldn't take it lightly, like, oh, he wants the best for me, so he wants to know my favorite sunset spot. No. I would think he's lazy, and he doesn't want to do the due diligence, and if we were to continue, like, going on dates or even, like, being together, this is the guy that he is, because you have, like, that first impression only once, and if you can't even, like, have all your green flags in check for the first you know, a little first impression and you're already showing these things and it's only, I think, down from there. I don't know, I'm very weird about that. Yeah, but then but then we, well, I, I speak for myself. Like, I've seen red flags before and I just, like, just go straight through. Run the red light. Why, why do you think that happens? Maybe they're just so pretty and you're just like, oh, but it kind of, it's worth it. You know, I've done the same thing with women yeah. where I'm just like, oh, they're just so bad that I don't even care that they're, like, a little crazy or... I am the same way with women, but I'm not the same way with men. Mm. Like, with women, I feel like I'm very stereotypical um, when it when people think about a man and a woman and how men are just, like, suckers for a beautiful girl. I feel like I'm kind of the same way where I'm just, like, F all those red flags. Like, she is just so beautiful and she is so great and so funny. Like, I'm going to do all the things and go completely out of my way and give all the chances. But with men, I'm not. And I think it's because with women, I step more into that masculine role. And so I, I try to put up with more. But with men, like, I'm not trying to put up with anything, if that makes sense. Mm, interesting. So I also see your guys' yeah. view yeah. point of, yeah. like, always continuing on with the red flags. I think women just have this, like, power of, like, I don't know. I don't know what, what it is. They say it's the power of the pussy. It is. It is pussy power. That is what it. I don't know what it is, and it must be that. It's, um, yeah, it's such an interesting thing because, you know, um, men. That's another thing. So women think that good-looking men 
have lots of women, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they, they assume that it's easy for a man to attract a woman. But they are missing like a whole big part of that, which is understanding how to attract a woman. Like that's a whole topic that you need to learn, you mm -hmm. know? And a, a lot of men, even if they have good looks and they have a lot of money, they, I mean, I've met so many guys, like they're just horrible of women, like horrible. And it's like, they, they got everything going for them, but apart from that side, like the, the social dynamics with women, they just don't know how to talk to a lady. They're just, they're just terrible. And um, like, f when I, I, as I say this, I'm, I'm talking about the guys that actually want, like he told me like, hey, I want this girl. Yeah. But then he doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that, those are the guys I'm talking about. But women seem to think that men, and men just like, can just click their fingers and get a woman. Mm -hmm. right? From my experience, the more attractive a man is, the worse he is with women. And I feel like <laughs> it's because they just know they have this type of sauce and they can like have these one night stands and whatever. But for me, I think the most attractive thing, like I'm a sapiosexual, like I'll fall in love with like conversation in your mind before anything. Like mm -hmm. my friends like don't believe me, but I'm not like, I don't see a man's looks and I'm just like, oh, he's so fine. Like I want to go home with him. That, that thought happens like after we've spoken spoken and we've had a really really deep conversation and I've already like got myself in that trance of like I want to keep having these conversations with him mm. I don't care about looking at a man all day I'm not gonna sit right. here and look at you right like we're yeah. gonna be spending the most most of our time talking you know and connecting mm. and I think men who are just like super attractive they have the body they have the swag or whatever they forget that they still need to know how to connect and they need and they forget about the fact that first impression means so much more than your looks you know um i do think that men that are really attractive can get a girl with a f snap of a finger with like the age of everyone trying to have instant gratification through like online dating like tinder whatever hinge so i think yes but I don't think it, it is necessarily the girl that they want. I think it's just a girl. And to me, <laughs> and so yeah. to me, that's not intimidating. I'm like, right. you can have any girl you want that's beautiful, but she's also probably a dunce like you. <laughs> you guys are both dunce. just pretty, probably both pretty and just also pretty stupid. <laughs> you know? So to me, it's not intimidating seeing a guy knowing he's probably fucking all these girls. So I'm like, how dope are these girls, though? Like, mm. you know? Yeah, that's, that's another thing. That's what I say to guys. I'm like... They're like, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with girls. I'm like, okay, well, what, what are the quality of the, the girls you're attracting? Girls. And usually, usually, most men, usually, I'd, I mean, obviously, this is subjective, but in my, my opinion, well, it's my opinion, six out of ten at best. And it's like, bro, like, come on, man. Exactly. <laughs> come on, bro. But, yeah, like, uh, it's just an interesting topic to talk about because, you know, relationships and dating, what we were talking before, and we're talking about intimacy, right? Yeah. Like a fear of intimacy, like fear of getting hurt, getting hurt and then going into another relationship and then not wanting to do the same stuff you did because it last relationship it got hurt. So I'm not going to do the same shit because I'm going to get hurt again. So now I'm going to just like create, create this fence, you know, and, and then I create another fence. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, like the dynamic is not the same because... I'm not giving all of me now. I'm giving like 50% because I'm like, I don't want you to come this close. You can't come this close. You can come here, mm -hmm. but not here. Yeah. You know? What do you, well, what, what, what's your experience has been with that? So I think as a digital nomad, I want to do that a little bit more. And my friends, they tell my friends and my family say that I should do it a little bit more. But I fall for people of high quality very, very quickly because I'm like, I don't want to lose this person. It's been so hard to find someone just like this. Mm -hmm. So I'll open myself up completely, even before sex. Like, I'll mm -hmm. just be very, very vulnerable from the beginning, be very trustworthy before they have earned trust versus what people have told me I should do is wait until they have given a reason for me to trust them versus trusting them until they give me a reason not to. If, they, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I go in zero to 100 really, really quick with the people that I think are worth it. And I've met a beautiful souls that way and have had beautiful connections that way. But since the topic is of like being an expat and all the things, like 
there's always that like, all right, but now we leave. And then now what? And then now it's like, do I want to keep doing this over and over again, right? But I think that I just have to or else how am I going to know that that connection was actually a connection if I didn't even let myself connect, you know? Um, as hard as it is and as shitty as it is sometimes to um, get that far just for it to go like nowhere, that time alone is a period of growth that I think you just need to go and find that person or maybe you can connect with them in the future or whatever the case may be. I think you just always have to be your best self like 110% and you can't unless you're 100% vulnerable. You know, you can't live off the fear that someone else hurt you and so I can't because I don't want to go through it. We have to go through these things. like, And if we don't, then we're going to miss out on a lot of really amazing opportunities and experiences and moments of true growth, you know? And for you, though, like, as you're saying that, you, you're not really settling down any, in any way because you're still traveling, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's even harder then because let's say if you were living in Bali for like the next 10 years, of course, that would be a different story, right? But you're, you're continuing on your travels as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I, if I, for example, like I met this guy in Mexico City and immediately we were like, wow, like why is this so perfect? And like we went from like one day to every single day we hung out for like five hours a day for like three weeks. No, like two weeks. And it was just like energy on energy. I didn't have to, f I didn't feel at all like I was too pushy. He didn't feel like he was too pushy. It was just equally like we want to spend this amount of time together. And we didn't even get to the point of having sex because we were just really enjoying each other's time. And when I left, I felt so bad. Like I wanted to go back to Texas and like be with this man. I was like, I'm, I will stop traveling to go wherever he is. And he's also in a position where he could meet me where I'm at and we can like literally live together and be remote and be digital nomads. We just haven't had that conversation. But that could be a possibility. Like he's still on the roster of people that like I will, if we continue talking, go back to or he will come to me wherever I am in the world, you know? So that wouldn't have happened if I didn't let myself like be vulnerable to someone, mm. you know, which is always beautiful to know because I'm very, very happy I met him and I haven't met or I've, I haven't had that connection with anyone in like a year. Mm -hmm. And that whole year of like kind of waiting around and being really careful and being really picky was worth just those two weeks alone, mm. 110%. Wow. And that's because you, you opened yourself up. Yeah, after mm. a year of not letting myself. Right. And not believing that I was ready and not believing that, you know, my requirements were going to be met and just trying to not like play myself, you know, but as soon I remember I was like literally laying in bed and I was like let me respond to this guy. Like I have a good feeling about this guy. I haven't been responding to anyone. Like let me respond to this guy immediately. It was like the best choice of the summer. Mm. It was amazing. But it's interesting you said that you didn't have sex with him. Mm -hmm. So you guys are still friends. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Why do you think... Uh, what do you think of that? Because uh, I have my own theories on this, but um, why do you think he hasn't made a move? Or has he made a move? Mm. And did you shut him down? He would, like, sleep over all the time, and we just didn't have sex. Like, we, like, simply, like, just love, like, laying there and cuddling, like, we'll make out or whatever... But, like, it just never got to that point. And I think we both just liked each other a lot. And we just didn't even care. Versus, like, when I'm not in a position of where I really, really like someone, but I want to, like, have sex with them or whatever the case may be, it's easy to just, like, have sex and then, like, leave or whatever. Um, but with him, I just felt like it, everything was just so perfect. And I didn't want... I mean, I wouldn't have mind having sex with him, but I don't know. It just wasn't in my head. So now, as you're, as you're talking about him now, like, do you see him more as a friend then? Um, I think that if he were to come out here to Bali and we would spend 
any more than a week together, I think we would actually discuss like being in a relationship. Like I think that that is the type of connection that we had. Mm -hmm. And we're both, we both kind of spoke about like, whoa, is this real? Like, are we meant to be, you know? But we're just in two totally sides of the world, two totally different sides of the world. And that's it, that's the only thing. Isn't that a weird thing for you though? Because have you been in a relationship that started like this before? Mm, I was in a relationship with a guy that we were talking online for like a year and a half and then we met in person and then we're talking online for another year and a half and then we went and traveled together for like two weeks then we're talking online for a couple months and then he asked me to be his girlfriend and then that relationship lasted like a month <laughs> like literally a month we should have just stayed friends and yeah. we should have stayed like um in our own lanes 100 percent. like some some good connections are just sometimes meant to stay that and don't need to like be relationships and that comes with like kind of what we were talking about like not wanting to be hurt again sometimes i'll like keep guys as like my guy best friends and be like low-key like i would date you but i don't want to ruin our friendship because mm. of that experience mm. you know so it's like I still live with a little bit of fear, too, because some things are just better off not romantically pursued. But with him, like, it's almost like a... There's something behind... There's something, like, in my head that tells me, like, I don't want to just be friends with him. Like, mm. I either want to date him or or not be friends with him. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, this is um, this is a big topic, right? Because... Um, there's a, there's, a, there's a few men out there that say that men and women can't be friends, right? And I actually have female friends that, like, yeah, I, I'm, I, I don't fully agree with that statement, right? So, but what you're saying is you're, you're basically saying you keep, well, correct me if I'm wrong here, you keep guys around as friends just as, like, kind of like insurance policies. Like, you know, like, in case something happens, I can go... I can go to this guy, we can have sex for a few days, whatever. Is that is that accurate? No, what I mean by that is, like, um, there's guys that, like, they're, they're, how do I explain this? Guys that are just really, really great guys, because I, I, I notice I fall in love with, like, friendship. Mm. Like, I fall in love with, like, that best friendship stage. I'm like, whoa, and then I start catching myself, like, catching feelings almost for that best friend or whatever the case may be. And then if I know that I don't want to ruin that best friendship, like I won't admit to my feelings for them and I won't let it get romantic or sexual in any way because I, want, I would rather keep them in my life forever versus kind of ruining it with sex. Mm. You know, I would rather just like keep them as a best friend or friend because right. I, I would rather just like go through life with them and like let those feelings kind of die out and be with someone that I actually could be with. But then has there been times where you crossed that boundary? of the friend's boundary. Yeah, and it ruined a lot of things because then the guy that I dated after was like, oh, well, now you can't be friends with him anymore. Mm -hmm. And, like, me, I remember me and this guy, like, we ran, like, a drop shipping company together, and then I started dating this guy, and he was like, well, even though you and him have never had sex, he used to like you, so... You, you have to, like, that business is done. Like, you can't run a business with him. I'm like, wait, what? I can't, run a, I can't run my company anymore because he used to like me and we used to kind of flirt, but we've never had sex. He's like, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so I'm like, so i rather, sometimes I, it's just best for me to just keep people where I know they would be long-term and what is realistic in the future because I'm always thinking, like, 10 steps ahead. Right, so... So, what, like, how did you feel about that then when he tells you that you can't be friends with him? That was, like, the reason we broke up. Mm. I thought it was just the most control. I don't not, like, I like being told what to do, but, like, that in, like, every other way. But that, like, my, like, who I'm friends with, who I spend time with, like, no. But can you see it from his point of view, though? Definitely. But I need him to be secure where it's, like, this happened before me and you were dating. Uh-huh. And now that we're dating, nothing is going to happen, and that's it. What if you go out on a night out and you have four shots of tequila and you're with this dude? 
What's, what's <laughs> even more crazy, though, is me and this guy never even met in person. Till this day, oh. we have never met in person. But we've talked every single day for, like, maybe four years. Mm. Like, straight business. Like, we don't talk yeah. if it's not about, like, business. So what you're saying about, like, crossing that line, because that was interesting. So what you said is after you were, you were, suing, you were, you were friends and then he asked if you wanted to be his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So usually what happens is, well, correct me if I'm wrong here, but usually what happens is it's the girl that's pushing to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Right, and so because because you what I'm hearing is because you weren't pushing for that, you just kind of like oh yeah that, that, yeah let's do it, and then I think maybe that's why it didn't work. I think we both like simultaneously wanted to try dating because it was like we were damn near dating, mm. and we just didn't have a title. Mm. But I was like I can I I was able to like imagine myself marrying him and having kids with him. Like we talked every single day for three years. Like. Not just like, hey, how are you doing? Like 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day for three years. But in total, physically, we've only hung out for like 12 days. Like crazy. Damn. Yeah. So there was a lot of connection. There was a lot of tension. Like dating him was like, to me, like a blessing. Like, oh, wow, we get to, I get to marry my best friend, you know? But I wish we could have just like stayed best friends and we didn't have to like throw a relationship on top of there. But I think because we both are the, on the same page of like, we want to travel the world and we want to live in different places and we want to work remote, it just made sense. And I think for people like us who are digital nomads, and, and because we have such like small options, we go with what makes sense almost. And I think at the time, there's a connection, there is that energy, and then it just made sense. You know, we, like, skipped all the red flags. We were like, no, nope, connection makes sense. We were like, all the other red flags, nope, doesn't matter because it makes sense. Huh. You know? Right. Okay, so now, how are you viewing relationships? And, like, do you still go through the red flags? Or are you more calculative now? You're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm definitely more calculative because I can see how something's going to unfold because I feel like I've been through so many different scenarios that I'll be like, oh, yeah, I had, I had a guy like this that used to say things like this and used to act like this after this, and this is what's going to happen. So, no. no, mm -hmm. I'll, like, I'll have that conversation with my head about every single conversation, about every single date, and be like, he reminds me of her or him or this time, and I'm like, mm, no. And so I like rule people out immediately. So I definitely catch the red flags very early. So this guy in Mexico, is he like any other guy you've... You said, you mentioned that you haven't had this connection in a year. So is he similar to the other guys you've dated or is he completely different? He is similar to the other guys, the other healthy relationships that I've dated. Like I usually... I guess I have a type, not really... But when things are really, really healthy, they usually follow the same pattern. They're usually, like, very calm guys, more quiet guys, but, like, very intellectual, almost, like, nerdy. Like, they're not, like, loud and in the mix and, like, want to be the center of attention and very, like, um, just hyper. I'm very hyper. And so, like, the guys I track are very calm. I feel like we need, <laughs> we're always, we, I always need that yin-yang energy, right? Right. And so he is similar to the other guys that I've had like healthy relationships which mm -hmm. with, which were which was really like refreshing. But I mean, off bat, like our conversations were so good. He was asking questions like, "So when was the last time you cried before?" Like questions that people don't normally ask, you mm -hmm. know. So that alone to me was just beautiful. Like being able to have like out of the norm like conversation for the first time in so long versus so how long are you going to be here how long do you have how mm. long have you right. how have you been liking mexico city the same kind of digital nomad conversation like so um how much longer do you have here and what are your plans for the next week like i don't i do not care <laughs> i do not care at all yeah yeah it's like that emotional intelligence right like mm -hmm. just being having more depth to you like as a person Mm -hmm. and and also showing interest like if you're this is what we were talking about yesterday with uh, Matt Karma he's a relationship coach anyway we were talking about 
uh, being emotionally available. Like, because if you're not emotionally available, then you won't even want to get to know them like on that level. Like, because that question is a good question, by the way. Like, when's the last time you cried? That's a, but that's like, I want to get to know you more question, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're not emotionally available, you, you, you don't, you, you won't even ask, that won't even be in your, your mind to ask a question like that. Because mm -hmm. like, that would be awkward for you to yeah. know when someone, because then you'd have to ask again, okay, why did you cry? You know, and people who aren't emotionally available are not ready to even have those type of conversations. Mm. So you're right about that. Yeah, like talking about emotions for men is the, one of the hardest things. Mm -hmm. Like I've been doing a lot of work on that side of myself and it's, it's hard because before I was in a relationship and I, she was crying and stuff and she was just complaining and I, I was just getting stressed out. I didn't know how to deal with the emotions that was being presented to me. So I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, stop fucking crying. Because that's what my dad used to do. He, mm. he didn't know how to deal with it either. So I learned from him. And so I'm, I don't have any tools. Well, I didn't have any tools to deal with it at the time. And so I was just like, oh, she's fucking stressing me out. Like, she's got to go. She's, mm. she's, she's got to go. <laughs> and when I, see it, when, when I see men react like that to women showing emotion I always ask how their parents are so mm. like I was dating some guy over the summer um in New York which lasted literally a month it was trash um he we got into an argument that didn't need to be an argument but he just felt attacked anytime I told him like that something was bothering me or whatever he felt so attacked like I just came out with a knife and just stabbed him a million times be so dramatic <laughs> And so I went out with my girls, came back. He was sleeping on the couch. I'm like, what is this, a sitcom where you come in and then my husband's sleeping on the couch with the covers. I'm like, this is straight out of a Simpsons episode and I'm not with it. So I woke him up and I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, you're sleeping on the couch for what? Like, this was not even a real argument. Imagine if we actually have a real argument. Like, what are you going to do? Throw my stuff out the window like an R&B music video? Like, what is going on? <laughs> And then I just couldn't help but laugh because I was yeah. like, is this, is this guy serious? And so I dragged him back to bed and I was like, did your dad used to do this? And he's like, yeah. And he just starts laughing. I'm like, this is not funny. <laughs> what? This is not funny. <laughs> like the guys that I've had healthy relationships with, like we'll go like more than half a year without getting into one small argument. Like there is no, for me, like arguing is not normal. Mm. And the fact that he turned everything into an argument, I'm like, I know this isn't me because I don't ever get into conflict with my partners. Like, we are always so chill. Communication's always on a thousand. Like, and with him, I'm, there was just no going around. I had to just pack my bags and go back to Mexico City. Mm. There was, I did, he was like, you don't want to work things out? I'm like, no. He's like, when you really want something, you work things out. I'm like, I don't, I don't really want this. So <laughs> I'm going back home. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Well, this is the thing, right? So people was... So we've got two people, uh, your upbringing, his upbringing, and if if one party hasn't worked through their shit, then it's going to show up in the relationship, and it's gonna it's gonna be like an explosion, and it's gonna be like what the fuck, you know? And exactly. he he hasn't clearly. It sounds like he hadn't dealt with his shit, like no. <laughs> not but at all. I saw my parents argue, and like my parents aren't together, but I've seen like my mom and her partners argue. I've seen my dad and his wife argue. And I, when I was dating a guy for like four years, when I was really, really young, I, for the, we didn't argue for the first year. After the first year, we started arguing and I would do these things that like my mom used to do, my dad used to do and say things that they used to say and have a certain tone in my voice that they used to have. But I was so aware and I knew it was not for me, it was from them. And so my awareness made me cut my shit really quick. So after my bickering with him for a couple months, I really had to sit down and like apologize to him and tell my mom like, look what you did. Look at me. Look what I'm doing to this poor man. Like I'm noticing I'm doing all this and it's from you. And I said, I had the same conversation with my dad. I'm like, what the heck guys? And so that made them both aware too. Cause I was just honest, like, Hey, I got this from you. I hope you're not still doing this cause this is ass, you know? And everything just comes down to awareness and I think everything can be solved and changed no matter your upbringing, no matter your influences, because if you really want to change, you will. Mm. Yeah. And I add to that, like, I think therapy is uh, important and therapy or coaching, you know, like mm -hmm. either one of those is good. And to just 
being more aware, like, because you can't have too much awareness. Like, it's like, the more awareness you have, the better your life is, because now you're like, all right, don't go there, don't go there, you know? Exactly. So, and it just helps you, in, in, in especially in this area of relationships, because usually what happens is we attract the same partner with a different name and a different face, right? And <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> that's usually what happens. That's why I asked you that question earlier about how this guy you met in Mexico, is he similar or different to all the other partners you've had? Because mm-hmm. this is another thing. One of my friends, I was, we were, she knows this. She has the awareness on this. It's like she has to uh, start attracting different guys because the guys she's been attracting have all been similar and it's all ended badly. Mm-hmm. And so if nothing changes, nothing changes, right? So then she just keep attracting the same kind of guys. Mm-hmm. This is why the coaching or therapy, whatever, which one you want to choose, but that's why it helps so much because then you start healing the parts of you that, for example, like that this guy you're talking about, sounds like he's addicted to conflict. So like if he keeps being addicted to conflict, he's going to attract women that are addicted to conflict because he thinks that's love because he saw his parents do it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy like to think of this, but like for me, if, if I'm in a relationship, I realized this before. I was like, oh, my parents used to argue. So subconsciously, I thought that's love. So if I'm in a relationship and there's no arguments, something's wrong because <laughs> we should be arguing, you know? Yeah, he said something like that. He was like, <laughs> arguing is normal. I'm like, to me, I don't think argue, like you don't need to argue about something. Like right. me and my ex, we didn't argue. We were together for like a year. Like we did not argue, not even a little bit. And then the guy I was with for like four years, we also did not argue at all. And then when we went through that phase of arguing, I knew it was me because I was aware of, you know, what I just said. Mm -hmm. So that got cut real quick. And I've noticed, though, the guys that I've attracted that were the best guys were when I was fully healed, when I was in the best, you know, stages of my life. I was very happy. I was very positive. But then the guy I attracted in New York... That happened um, when I was in, like, a really, really limbo stage with, like, my mental health. And, like, I feel like I just wanted to be in a relationship. And I wanted to, like, run all the red flags and just make something work with this guy. Because it was really, really great at first. And so when things got bad, I was like, well, I really, really, really want to be in a relationship. So I'll really, really, really try to forget that he just did this and said that and just try to make it work. When that's not like me at all, but I didn't feel like myself during that time in the summer either. So that's why I took that out with that guy. Um, So I'm also very aware that it is my fault, you know. Um, But the um, one that I was with a couple years ago, who I said we were best friends for three years and then we were together... I was with him when I was really happy and I was in a great place in my life. It was when the pandemic first started and I moved to Florida and me and all my family lived in just a big house together and it was just so fun. Like I'm Latina, very traditional Latina where we all like are just homies and we just hang out in the house like like that. And so I was so happy and because of that I think I was just on a high of like now now I have my family together like which is so big to me and now like what what could be better than also having, like, a boyfriend? Like, let me turn this guy into my boyfriend, you know? But I didn't need that in my life at that time, you know? I think I was just, like, riding this high of, like, this is good and this is good and yada, yada, yada. You know, I think re- the most beautiful relationships come when you're not looking for it and when you're healed and when you're happy and if you feel like you, at any point, are craving attention and that's when you go looking for guys that's when you go looking for just fun and instant gratification even without knowing it it's always just like instant gratification you know yeah and it's it's always that and it's it's coming from a place of like i need this like if i don't have this then something's going to be wrong so yeah like you said about being healed like realizing that actually this is a bonus like and this is a hard concept for people to understand. This is something that I've been made aware of since I've been living in Bali and just understanding more is that I need to be fully okay with myself to the point where I don't actually need a partner, which is the craziest thing. Like for most people, that's just going to go over their heads. Mm-hmm. But that's actually the truth of it, right? Because then now you don't, 
you're not coming from a place of I need and that energy is, especially for men, like if I need a girlfriend and I start dating, she's going to feel that energy of me like, oh, like that needy energy is going to start rubbing off because energy doesn't lie, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like that whole, there's something to be said for just having fun as well. But also like if you, if you want a relationship and needing a relationship is two different things. Right? Exactly. Because I, I definitely felt like that energy was coming off with the guy in New York this summer. Like I am very like traditional in the way where I like to cook. I like to clean. I like to do all those things for my man. And I was like, he was like pretty much telling me that he didn't want me to like work all day, even though it was my hardest season ever. Like I, all I wanted to do was work all day and work doesn't feel like work to me. So like a, me being in the office of 10, 12 hours was absurd to him. But for me, I'm like, I needed and wanted to do this, you know, because if I want to take a month off, I want to be able to, and therefore shut up. You're like, what are you talking about? But he was like, no, like try to be home at this time. And I was like, I tried to respect that. I would come home, um, take the train about an hour and a half, two hours with all the commuting and everything, try to be home by five, cook a three course dinner every night. By the time I'm done cooking and cleaning, it's 9 p.m. I stay up to like watch TV with him, which I don't I don't ever just sit around and watch TV. If I'm on the couch watching TV, I have my laptop. You know, I'm trying to be productive simultaneously. But he didn't even want me to have my laptop out. He didn't want me to talk about work at home. It was just like I would have never put up with this shit from anyone else. But at that time, I just really wanted it to work. And I felt like he was thriving off the fact that I was so submissive and it was so unlike me. Mm. Like, I like to do these things naturally for someone, but for him, I felt like I had to do these things. And it was just the worst dynamic, mm. for sure. And now you know that that was all coming from fear, right? It's like, it was fear. Because you're so scared of losing him. Fuck, I got to do all this shit for him because I don't want him, I don't want to lose him, so I got to do all this shit. Yeah, it wasn't even like a losing him situation. It was just like, I really just wanted him to be happy and like right. impressed. And I just wanted him to know like I'm the shit. But really, I know I'm the shit. Right. And I don't need like, this is what I do naturally. Uh -huh. So I don't know why I had to like try to overcompensate myself almost. But if he's not happy, what happens then? Like, if, if the stuff you're doing is doesn't make him happy, then what's the consequence of that? It wasn't. Like, I was doing everything that I noticed he liked. And at the end of the week, I remember he I, like, was coming back home and he texted me. He's like, this shit is whack. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, you're never home. We never spend any time together. I'm like... I'm home at five every single day. That's unheard of in Mexico City. I have my WeWork membership. I'm in the office literally 12 hours a day during my busy seasons. Like, I'm home at five. I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. By the time we actually get to spend some time, it's only a couple hours a day. But I'm like, in reality, like, I had a busy week, and that's it. Like, ideally for me, if I'm dating someone who is also a digital nomad, I'm going to be somewhere else across the world and he's also going to be somewhere else and we're going to have to like just accept that and then meet back up next week or two weeks later. And so for the fact that I can physically be in this man's space and I can see him every single day and he still felt like we weren't like together, I was just like mind blown. Like I was just so confused and I was so sad. I like wanted to figure out what to do to make him feel better about this. So I just literally only worked like four hours a day so I can spend more time with him after he texted me that. And my my work went down, my sales went down like crazy. Like it, yeah. it made a whole impact on my business, like everything, because I was trying to like overcompensate. Yeah, this, this is my point though. So the reason why you're trying to overcompensate is because of the fear behind that is... I guess it was a fear, yeah. Right, like it's... if. Because the reason, because if you didn't really care, you wouldn't be sad, mm -hmm. right? Because you're doing all this stuff and it's still not good enough for him. Mm -hmm. So now I've got to stop working as much because I need to please him. Because mm -hmm. if I don't please him, what 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 would the? If I don't please him, then what? He might leave, right? Or mm -hmm. I don't know. What if, what what would he do if you don't please him? If you didn't please him, right? What were you afraid of? Were you conscious of that or aware of that at a time? I would have been like a hundred and ten percent okay with us just agreeing on let's just stay friends and let's just go from here mm -hmm. but I kind of had that conversation with him where it's just like hey I don't think this is working out like we should just stay friends and he was like fuck that like very strict like fuck that 
like it's either we're dating or we're not like I don't do that I'm like whoa it was just so aggressive I've never dated someone so aggressive you know and that was scaring me mm. I was genuinely scared and I didn't know how to get out mm. it was insane ah. so there it is you didn't know how to get out so you just went into it yeah right from the start yeah I think when I did break up with him he wasn't even in town he was like in Mexico or something for the weekend and I was in town. I got back from Paris early. And so he was supposed to, we were supposed to be there together, but I got back from Paris early. He went last minute to Mexico. So I had time by myself to really sit there in New York and like think about it. And um, I read the book Attached. The second that audiobook was done, I like broke up with him. <laughs> I was like, you're not compatible. <laughs> and he lost his shit. And like I should have called him and had that conversation, but he texted me something stupid and I just texted him back. And then we had that conversation obviously on the phone or whatever, but it was just crazy. Like that book did something to me. I was like, Oh, nope. You're all the red flags. Sorry. <laughs> like it, this book confirmed, like this is not going anywhere. And like, I always look at something with the goal. Oh, I always look at a relationship with the goal of like marriage. And if I don't see marriage within the first like literal couple weeks, I don't know. I feel like you just know. Like, have you ever dated someone where you just know that you would not marry them? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've definitely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't know. I feel like I can just sense right away. Like, can I see this person in my life for the rest of my life? I think. I think uh, women default to that way of thinking more than men, just from an evolutionary perspective. Yeah. Um, because men are designed to. <laughs> men are designed to impregnate as many women as possible right that's how we're designed mm -hmm. in terms of testosterone and sperm and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um but women are designed differently so women look at a guy and like they start thinking ahead in the future like from the from the get-go right it's like all right does this guy have the potential to be the husband the father of my kids and can we get married like does he have does he tick the, these boxes right and that's that's just the way it goes that's the game right men yeah. know that too but yeah men don't usually think like that <laughs> women yeah. are at first i mean there's lots of men that do of course but i'm i can't speak for most men but yeah it depends on what stage of life you're at because mm -hmm. if you're like let's say you're like 35 years old and you're you're a dude maybe you want to find a wife you know but if you're 25 years old and you're a guy probably not right. you know I'm, that's like my default immediately. Like couple couple dates in, I'm like, can I see myself dating this guy? All right, we're dating. Couple weeks in, can I see myself being with him long term? Like, can I see myself with him in three years? You know, like immediately, immediately. Like I'm just defaulted to to not waste my time. I'm very like I'm very 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 calculated, and that's something that my ex knew. He was like, you wouldn't hang out with him if you didn't get anything out of it or you wouldn't go on this date or you wouldn't like um have this friendship or you wouldn't go on this whatever if you didn't get something out of it for yourself and that's very true i'm a very calculated person and that's just what it is and um i see a lot of my friends like who were once so excited to date their partner that i told them like he doesn't work remote you travel often he doesn't travel or another example is like okay you are very high maintenance. He hates working, doesn't know how to save money, can't spoil you, can't like cater to your love language of like gift giving and like acts of service. He, so like, why are you continuing this? Like I asked multiple of my friends, like if you know this from the beginning, like why are you dragging this on just to have like a, a relationship that dies out when you could have like spent the best of your, years of your life with someone who ticked off those boxes from the beginning? You know, like, yeah, why do they waste their life then? Why is that? I, I seriously think that women just feel like we can just like mold men into this like person or this character that they never w were even meant to be. You know what I mean? Like I, I can confidently say like any guy that I touch like turns to gold. Like any guy that I've dated has like done 10 times better after me. Just the conversations we have, the life we've lived. Like, the guy that we were dating before, like, turned into, like, a crazy, he turned into, like, a crazy, crazy, crazy traitor because he was jealous of, remember that guy who I said I had a business with? And he was mad 
that that guy used to have a crush on me. That guy was like a really big investor. And so he was teaching me how to invest. And so I was teaching the guy how to invest. After we broke up, he ended up doing crazy, crazy numbers with his investing. And that's something he never even thought of until he was dating me. Like I always try to like, put the people that I love on game, like no matter if it's about money, business, whatever the case is. Like, I try to always leave them with something amazing. And so like for you to like go into a relationship and like not know that you're going to give and just always feel like you're going to take I think that's where you like fuck up the most. Like people go into relationships like calculated in that way where it's just like they know that this person has money and so they're going to take care of me, you know, and they can't think of it long term, but they're like I know in this time like I'm going to be spoiled, like blah 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 blah. And they don't let themselves check out those or they don't check those boxes off with that person because in that time they're taking so much. They're not giving anything, you know. Do you think that's a problem uh, with the women that you see now these days? Yeah, I think women love to take. I don't think women love to give at all. I think they love to take, especially with social media being so like alpha, alpha, beta. Like now everyone wants this like alpha, alpha, alpha man. But it's like, all right, but then what are you going to do for him? Like that person. Can probably, Amen. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you going to do for him? Like he can do all the things, but like eventually they're going to feel like, all right, all you are a pretty face and good sex and, like, a good time, but, like, are, what can you teach him? What can you do for him? Like, what are you compensating in his life that he is missing, you know? And I think that's so important so we don't all waste our time, you know? We're all, I feel like we're all just wasting our time being with people that we know from the beginning we are not compatible with and we are just taking from you should always go with the intention to give. And if you can take, cool. But everyone should just want to give, 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 give. And obviously, there's, there will be something for you to take if you're with someone who also wants to give. Mm. It should just come naturally. But I think people are so calculated now. They're, like, plotting on mm. these people. Like, I want to, like, guys, like, hit me up in my DMs. Like, oh, like, um, I'll be in Bali in November. What's that got to do with me? <laughs> what does that have to do with me? <laughs> that has nothing facts, to do facts. with me. <laughs> It's like immediately people show these colors too and they think it's like sexy or whatever. Like, oh, like when can I, when are you going to take me on a trip? Like, I'm like, do you think this is attractive for me right now? Like people, people have gotten so comfortable with taking that they just, they'll just like let that be known. Like they are just like pride to the side, no shame. Like, and I feel like people are liking that too, though. They're liking the honesty of like, all right, this girl is with me because I travel and I can take her on a trip and she's pretty, so I'm going to do it. The people are almost like, fuck it, at least she was honest. Hmm. And to me, that's so crazy. I don't know. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you that. What's the craziest DM you've gotten? Like, Because <laughs> there's guys that do that. You know, and it's, I guess maybe they, maybe they think it works. Maybe it does work for them, for some girls, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but it's picked the wrong one, I guess. I don't get <laughs> too many crazy DMs. I feel like I'm, like, very active on my stories every day, and I feel like I give off this persona where it's just, like, I'm very nice and outgoing, but also don't fuck with me, and mm. I'm not stupid. And I think that I get more DMs from girls than I do guys, and I think it's because I come off as very alpha and I feel like girls would rather like me take control versus guys are maybe like more intimidated. I don't know. I don't get too many DMs from guys actually. Mm. Like, which is great because I don't want people like taking advantage of me because I travel and I have a business and we can live this life, you know. Mm. Um, all of my best connections were made, I think, through social media, which is great. And then we meet in person and then it's very organic from there. But... Um, yeah, people definitely watch what they say to me now, I think. <laughs> mm. So what was the advice that you give to people? Because you said that women like take too much. And what would you say if there's women who they're like, oh, fuck, yeah, what Talia just said there is like, that's, that's what I do. What, what do you have to say to them? So you mean advice for people who feel like they take too much? Yeah. I think that they need to see where they're taking too much and go back to the drawing board and see how they can make that a part of their routine, make that a part of their life and try to fix that side of them. So if they feel like they aren't able to travel because they're not um, financially independent enough or um, 
not, not financially educated enough and they feel like that's why they've been dating these certain types of guys it, because they going on random weekend trips with them and I mean that's how these girls are exploring Bali at the end of the day they're going on free dates with these with this guy they met on Tinder they're going on a weekend trip to Lombok with some random guy who invited them like that is how a lot of these girls have made a way around like Bali I've noticed like talking to these girls even in Mexico City like I'm like, oh, um, you went to Puerto Vallarta. Who did you go with? Oh, I met this guy the other day. And so we just went. I'm like, you gave it up to go to Puerto Vallarta. It's a 40-minute flight, $20 flight, because he treated you for this weekend. That was maybe only $300. Like, they would just give it up and take so much, and they'll leave and get their energy sucked out of them. I'm like, ma'am. So I think that if you feel like you are going to certain men for, you know, for these free trips, for, for free food, for, you need to really sit back and see how, what do I need to be doing more of or less of for me to be doing this, for me to be able to do this on my own? Because this is obviously the life that you want, which is, which is great. But because you know this and because you're aware of this, it would be a lot more attractive and beneficial for you in the future to learn how to do this on your own. And then you meet someone who also can do that. And then it's just like, bam, power couple. You guys both like to go to amazing restaurants. You like to both take dope weekend trips. You guys can both do these things with each other for each other versus like feeling like you can only do these things if you are with a partner or with a, a, another person, you know? Yeah, and then it's like the value side of it too. Because if you can do that by yourself, then you meet someone else and it's like you can add value to that person. Exactly. It's not just, you're not just, a, like you said, not just a pretty face, mm -hmm. which, yeah, that gets boring too for in the, for the, from the guy's point of view. Like, I don't know, if I'm, I'm talking for myself actually, but yeah, just doing that whole, um, like, I don't know, it, get, it does get boring for me. I can't speak for every guy because some guys, they just love dating beautiful women and they just can't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's just a new one. The, the variety is so. Uh, it's like, of course, I like variety too, but it, I guess it comes down to the vision. It's like, yeah. what do you want for your life? Do you want to be doing this for the rest of your life? You know, mm -hmm. do I want to be just dating for a month, two months, three months relationships for the rest of my life? No, I don't. You know, it it does serve a purpose at certain phases of my life, but do I want to be doing that forever? No. So then it's like, all right, when am I going to start? But the thing is, <laughs> this is actually what I wanted to talk about. I believe for a man, it's different from a woman, right? So a man has to date multiple women to know what he wants. Because mm -hmm. the man is the pursuer, right? Yeah. So I've met so many men who have just met a girl when they were 18 years old. And now they're married, and now they get all this fucking bullshit. Wife's not giving them sex. All, all this shit happened yeah. because they just stuck with the first woman that showed interest. Mm -hmm. I think that's a major, major, major mistake for most men. There's some men that pull it off and they're like happily married for like 30 years from when they were 18, right? Mm -hmm. But for most men, I like my advice to them if they're listening would be to date as many women as they can, like early on. To, it's kind of like tasting ice cream. Like, if you just keep tasting salted caramel, like, how are you going to know that strawberry is the flavor that you liked? But you've had salted caramel from day one. Yeah. And that's all you've had. But actually, when you the day you taste strawberry, you're like, oh, fuck, that's way better than salted <laughs> caramel. You know? So it's like, you got, I think, I think you've got to taste the rainbow, you know? Yeah. And, and then you see what you like and what you don't like. And then, same thing with beautiful women. Like, it's, it's the same advice I'd give. It's like, you've got to taste the rainbow. You know, mm -hmm. before you can like be like, yeah, these are the qualities that I like from this guy and this guy. Like, I'm all right. This is what I want now. So now I'm gonna go and look for that. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And I don't think that anybody needs to check off like a hundred percent of the boxes. You know, but I think that there needs to be like top three that are just non-negotiable. There's gonna be some people who are more hygienic than someone else, and that and that could piss you off, and that could be like your non-negotiable, and that's fine. That could be more important to you than like if they work remote or whatever the case may be. But I think that everyone just needs to have their unique non-negotiables and let that be what it is, a non-negotiable. Um, because 
there is so many people that you can taste and try and have conversation with, but all of those people should immediately like match your non-negotiables. And then you can taste them, you can try them, you can do all the things, you know what I mean? But I don't think there's a point in like even exploring with people who are, that you know you're not gonna connect with in certain ways if you're in a stage of your life where you're looking for that longevity. But if you're looking for just someone to have like casual sex with often, then they don't need to check off those non-negotiables unless you have a list for that, you know. But um, yeah, I agree with what you said that you just need to get around safely and make your decision from there because a lot of people stay with someone that they're comfortable with because they went through the motions with them and they know that person like the back of their hands and vice versa. And in reality, like, there's so many people who will, are ready to treat you better and so many more people who are ready to give you a life that you didn't even know was out there. So sometimes it's better to, to get out of your comfort zone and have that hard conversation with the person you've been with and hurt some feelings and be like, we cannot be together anymore. I know it's been five years, but you, your partner is your partner for life, for business, even though if they're not your business partner, they're your business partner. You're your life partner, everything, like everything. And so if you're just with someone because you feel bad, I, I've heard this before so many times, I don't want to break up with him because I feel bad. I don't want to break up with her. I don't want to hurt her feelings. This is your life. You only have one life. You're only getting older. And you could be doing so much better. I feel like when you're in a relationship, you should never for once think in the back of your head, I wonder what it would be like to date someone else right now. Or I wonder what it would be like if I would have, you know, stayed with my other partner. I think you should just be that secure, you know, and that's how secure I was with my ex. Like, nothing else mattered. Like, I can see the most beautiful man and woman in the world. Like, I will never be thinking about pursuing them, even if we were gone for long periods of time, you know, like, you should ha have that type of security. And if you don't, and if you feel like, oh, I've had this conversation with this guy, now I can see my life with him, fuck this guy, that means that you're not, you shouldn't be with your partner anymore. If you, if you meet someone who you're attracted to and you immediately are thinking about life with him instead of your partner, which I hear all the time, it's time to let that man go. It's time to let that girl go, for sure. Yeah, and, and as you're saying this stuff, I'm like, so many people I've met as well, they just they say this stuff to me, the same similar things they're saying to you, and it's just they're just stuck in this relationship that they don't want to be in, and it's just really in just being in denial. Like, mm -hmm. They're just not being honest with themselves, mm -hmm. and that was me for so long. Like I was just wasn't being honest with myself. And I'm sure when you met other girls, you'd be like, "Damn, I'd rather be with this girl." Like you probably had those moments where you're like, hmm. "Yeah," but it wasn't it wasn't like a long term mindset of that. It was like more like a short term mindset. Okay. Like, okay. But it wasn't like, oh, she's a better woman. Like, it was just a short term thing. It was like, oh, yeah, she looks nice, kind of thing, mm. you know. But um, yeah, I just I was lying to myself too, you know. And one of my friends he was like, dude, you got you got to be brutally honest with yourself, like. And I wasn't like I was like, yeah, bro, you're right, you're right. And then I just fucking didn't <laughs> didn't take his advice at all, you know. It's just, but again, the fear was controlling me. That was ultimately what it was. It's like I was so scared of. This is what I've realized doing my own work is that I was just scared of the unknown. Like, okay, if I end this relationship, fuck. It's all the whole, like, am I, I, do I feel worthy enough? Am I good enough to get, to attract someone who's be like better than her, you know, for example. That's how I felt. Yeah. I get it. Mm. And that's the fear that we don't want to confront, right? It's like, that's, that sucks to look at that in the face and be like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I think that was the scariest part. And it, it took me a year for me to, like reclaim myself and reclaim my badassery and be like I am that girl like why am I not letting myself believe this and as soon as I let myself like back into my divine feminine and like start giving off that energy again I met that guy in Mexico City like it was like almost instant mm. like I did an ayahuasca retreat in May and I let a lot of things go and from there I was able to kind of move with more grace with my life. And like two months after that is when I met that guy. 
and everything was just like a really really good snowball effect like with my company with my friendships like with everything everything's just been really really good since i since i reclaimed myself which is very hard to do after you leave a relationship you know um but i think the most important thing for people to remember if they're watching this and they just got out of a relationship or are thinking about you know breaking up with someone whether it's to be with someone else or just to be with themselves is that you have your own identity and to never I tie the identity and tie your worth to someone else even if they made you feel better than you've ever felt before like you are always able to get to your best self without anyone else 100 mm. percent absolutely and that that's a great note to end on like that was that was a really good uh, p piece of advice for people listening because I, I agree with that as well you got to heal yourself and then then you'll attract different right exactly yeah so do you have any last parting words for people mm, my last parting words um i just wish the best for everyone mm -hmm. i really wish that everyone ends up with their dream partner i think that being in a relationship is amazing, but it's not for everyone. And I think that people need to let go of that comparison that they might be doing on social media, seeing everyone on these amazing trips and living this life. Because at the end of the day, what's important is what's going on behind closed doors. And if you can stop focusing on like the material um, of it all and like the what it looks like aesthetically and really focus on the back end of things and the like really conquer all the all the things that you know you need to fix then i'm sure that everyone will have a beautiful relationship with their next or current partner awesome awesome so talia where can people find out more about you if they're curious um you can find me on instagram at travel with talia and my group travels can be found on t world tours on instagram and my website is tworldtours.com awesome Thank you for coming on and thank you for the intro. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I'll do the outro. See you guys in the next video. My name is Aaron Darko. Ciao.